it's not that we don't have joy in our life. We do. Because Brittany would want us to have joy. But it hits you when you least expect it. In August in 2013, a pregnant mother was gunned down while she was just driving in Brown County. The gunshots also struck her young daughter, who somehow survived. This is a case that even today is gaining traction on social media and getting national publicity. But the person who killed Brittany Stikes has yet to be identified. Jessica Schmidt gives us a closer look at the case from Cincinnati's Crime Vault. Well, there's no question that those who are closest to Brittany Stikes are dedicated to her case. They have faith that detectives are not far from solving it. And investigators tell me they're using some incredibly new technology that could bring them their next big break. She always had um, this cute little persona about her, her cute little personality and um, a very mothering personality. For Mary and David Dodson, Many of their most heartfelt memories with their daughter, Brittany Stikes, now feel frozen in time. Brittany and me kind of had the same sense of humor. We could go somewhere, never have to say a word to each other, and both of us could break out laughing. She was always my little sidekick and my little helper. The Dodsons never expected to lose a child, especially at a young age. Brittany was such an innocent soul. She had such a loving, caring, innocent soul. She was 22 years old. She was a baby. She just started life. She not left, not left my apron strings yet. She was still holding on tight to me and her daddy. Mary still remembers the last conversation she had with Brittany over the phone. And I said, well, honey, I love you. You have a good day. And she says, I will, mom. I love you too. And that was the last thing I could talk to her. It was only hours later, on August 28, 2013, Brittany was killed in an ambush-style attack. She was driving on 68 in Brown County, headed to her parents' home to celebrate her dad's birthday when it happened. For probably the first seven years after, the birthday was just kind of non-celebrated. Investigators with the sheriff's office believe this video is likely the last time Brittany was seen alive. She was driving in that yellow Jeep when only a short time after this footage, someone shot her multiple times. Mary and Dave knew something was wrong. And David looked at me and I looked at him and we both instantly got up and we went as far out into the yard as we could and listened to the sirens and I said, David, it's, oh, it's Brittany. Craig LaBelle and his wife were passing by when they spotted the Jeep off the road in the woods. Brittany was dead behind the wheel. It emotionally has affected him very much. Adding to the heartbreak, Brittany was pregnant when she died. And her daughter Aubrey, just 18 months old, had been shot in the head. Somehow, though, Aubrey survived. Brittany took one baby with her when she went and the Lord left one with us. Detectives say that initial investigation pointed them toward Brittany's husband at the time, Shane Stikes. I got a phone call from Shane and he tells me, um, uh, Brittany's dead, they shot her. People are calling you a killer. Yeah, yeah. They all thought you did it? Yeah, quite a bit of people were pointing fingers at me. That's Fox 19's Stefano D.P. Trantonio speaking with Shane in 2018. So I'll ask you flat out, did you shoot and kill your wife? Absolutely not. Detectives interviewed him and say he did take several lie detector tests. Although no one has been officially cleared in this case, they say even now Shane is cooperative. Oh man, it was so horrible. With no shell casings found at the scene and little evidence left behind, detectives pursued other theories. They looked into a road rage confrontation that reportedly involved Brittany and happened earlier that day. That did not lead to an arrest. Come 2015, they were told this man, Tommy Lee Lopez, had been hired to kill Brittany, but that turned out to be a hoax. It's like a wound that somebody keeps throwing salt in. Detective Quinn Carlson, currently on this case, says right now they're using very new technology, hoping it'll bring them new leads. He can't say what it is, but reveals they're putting together a lot of data, which could help pinpoint where people were when Brittany died. We had a meeting with him yesterday, and the meeting um, basically is we're doing technology that we've never, ever done before in the Sheriff's Department. 
focused on bringing attention to Britney's case, the Dodsons honor Britney with memorials and celebrations every year. Happy birthday, Britney! We all get together on the holidays, but there's always an empty feeling. It is a tragic tradition, one that means a lot to Britney's sister Emily, who was just 13 when Britney died. I was really close with Britney. I was like her little shadow. Anything she did or anywhere she went, she took me with her. We did everything together. When Mary and Dave briefly considered putting those events on pause, Emily took matters into her own hands. She started a Facebook group where anyone can talk about the investigation or about Britney. And it just went crazy. Everybody was coming up with theories and um, there was people posting tips anonymously on the group like it. It really blew up. There's people from Ukraine. There's people from Australia all around the world. Mm -hmm. That's all of a sudden that are following this. It led to Britney's case being featured on several nationally known podcasts and news programs. It's it's an amazing feeling to know that we're not the only ones that think about her. A life was taken that shouldn't have been taken. It wasn't theirs to take. And I think that hits home with a lot of people. There's also now a $50,000 reward for information. If it was your son or daughter that got killed and someone else knew, you'd want them to come forward. Brittany's family members, of course, want answers for themselves, but mostly they want them for now 10-year-old Aubrey. She is definitely a smart mouth little version of her mom. She has the craziest attitude and she's super mouthy and just really outgoing and loud. Um, she holds nothing back. Um, she's been through a lot of trauma, but it definitely does not stop her. Until that day comes, they're prepared to do whatever it takes to make sure Brittany is never forgotten. I don't want her locked away in a closet somewhere because whether she's here or she's in heaven, I still love her. Mary told me that she does believe she knows in her heart who killed her daughter, but she won't say more than that to avoid impacting this investigation. As for some of the evidence in this case, Shane Stikes sued the Brown County Sheriff's Office several years ago to get the yellow Jeep. He won. He does have it back in his possession. He told us that's something Aubrey wanted. If you'd like to join the Facebook group started by Brittany Stikes' family, we'll have a link in our story on our website and news app. Jessica Schmidt, Fox 19 Now. Jessica, thanks. You can watch all of our Crime Vault stories on our website or app under the Crime Vault section. Jessica also has a podcast. It's really a good listen. It's called Cincinnati's Crime Vault Beyond the Broadcast. It's all free on all your platforms. And a new episode just came out yesterday. <laughs>